Hi everyone. You must be wondering what future holds for us and what's happening in current scenario related to pandemic. We are already seeing a lot of jobs being lost. Would artificial intelligence really take away our jobs? You must be wondering there are a lot of courses coming up on artificial intelligence. What should you take up as your career option when you're really looking at these courses? Is it really so important? What's going to be the impact of artificial intelligence? Is what I'm going to cover up in the coming session. I'm Sridhar Sheshatri, founder of Spotflock Technologies, an ex Facebook, ex Electronic Arts. I'm here to share my experience and knowledge. Let's get started. So, as I already said, you would be wondering about a lot of things. So, what comes to your mind when you think about artificial intelligence? Number plate detection, use cases that are being published in newspaper, uh, or maybe COVID-related reports their analysis, any of those things come to your mind. Or you're thinking about Terminator movie, or are you thinking about Iron Man suit? What comes to my mind when I think about artificial intelligence? So Iron Man, Jarvis suit, I mean, those are the things that really comes to my mind. And I want you to think about it when you're getting started with your career. Because until unless you don't have excitement, until unless you cannot have a vision like that, I mean, you don't have to be a programmer because mark my words, in another five years, there will be a platform which will ask you not to code and it will code for you when you will just talk to it. Mark my words, another 10 years from now, you just need to be a creative thinker, a critical thinker and a person with higher level of empathy. And that's what you require to really design good artificial intelligence systems. Human intelligence has evolved with time and it will continue to evolve. Human emotional quotient has evolved with time. And what we really require to do is enhance the emotional quotient part. So I'll try to take you back in time and talk about where all it started. So Alan Turing during World War II tried to solve a lot of encryption and mathematics problems. There were movies made on this topic, books written on this topic. If you're really getting curious about it, please read those, watch those movies. It'll really give you a thrill, a kick to pursue your career in AI. So what exactly happened? He saved a lot of lives using mathematics, statistics, and decryption techniques. He made certain machines to do that. He was one of the founding fathers of AI. Then people know John McCarthy as one more founding father of artificial intelligence. So I'll not talk about long, long ago kind of stories. Let's get to the core part of it. That'll excite you. There are a few important aspects to all of the story. One, you need to understand what are the real problems that we are trying to solve and where to use artificial intelligence. So the key area is a lot of people confuse automation with artificial intelligence. So I'll simply explain the difference between both of these. Automation is all about something a person does repetitively. And if you are into a job that is monotonous and you just repeat the same steps every day, trust me, those jobs are already going away. People are automating those tasks using macros or maybe programming and a very little flavor of machine learning. But machine learning or AI is a level above that. And this gets a little more complex when we take it and we call it deep learning. And there are concepts, concepts of neural network. Those come into the picture. So how do you differentiate automation and artificial intelligence? Something which is very rule driven and is done every day, like if then else kind of conditional statements. Those are typically automation example where as soon as you sit inside the car and you don't lock the door properly, the system is going to beep a particular buzzer. So these are automation systems. Let's talk about AI. AI are intelligent systems. Typically, all the historic knowledge that has been captured in your systems, your databases, in the last paradigm of moving towards big data. But don't get worried. If people force you to be a programmer, to be a mathematician, 
you would be wondering how would i sustain my jobs in future without knowing these how would i be relevant in the times of ai if you are getting started with your career that question might bother you but i would tell you something that will relax you a bit what we need more than anything as i said already is creative thinking and critical thinking i'll quickly talk about what can be done to achieve that kind of quality in your career if you are not a programmer so just think if you have to design a system for protecting your borders your country where your soldiers are fighting through and probably there is a sniper standing on the other side of the border trying to take down your soldiers i'm not trying to solve a very simple problem what's happening here i want a system where a robot with cameras installed in it those would act like eyes and probably a mic installed in it would act like ears so all the sensory organs that we have we try to like replicate that into a system of computer vision into a system of machine learning into a system of nlp natural language processing and we make that as a logic and we try to solve this problem so what i want to do here in this problem i want to save my soldiers from a sniper who is standing across the border i would design a bulletproof jacket which can actually take in the information if the soldier was lucky enough and if one of the bullet really pierces through the bulletproof jacket can i really get the estimates and can a machine gun which is positioned behind my soldier identify the probable place from where the shot came and can it identify a target and lock down the soldier on the other side and take him down i mean that might be sounding like a blue sky idea and impossible thing to do for some people but that's what we need to do that's what tesla did tesla made these cars which are autonomous there's no driver sitting in and they're selling these cars and they have taken care of safety all just using artificial intelligence but before somebody programmed those there were people who were able to think about the idea so if you're not a programmer if you're not a analyst if you're not taking up a course today just to code you still need to go through the journey you need to understand what ai is and you can then design an agent all those can be read about and you can design these ai based agents and become a critical part as a subject matter expert in future so i'll not take much of the time just giving you examples here but i'll explain you some fundamental areas how to get started where to get started so how to get started you should just google up some content get your basics right but most importantly definitely go to experts who will give you the direction and tell you based on your career based on your background how to get started on all of this so there are a lot of courses available online but my recommendation would be counsel understand your background and get started don't rush to be a data scientist that's a bigger problem everybody is trying to get into it's not solving the problem it's creating another problem why i'm saying that because not everybody needs to be a scientist if everybody is trying to be a data scientist and they are trying to just solve the problem from theorem's perspective who is going to think and solve for the real problems and that's what we really require there is a team needed how are these teams formed in corporate some of these angles are very important to understand as a fresher where you are in your career right now you might just be confused in a typical push you might just end up taking certain courses and you will still get much more confused at that stage so if all of this excites you you should go back and look at ai for your career your background i'll quickly talk about a critical aspect there are two important areas in artificial intelligence where people who come from arts background or people who come from science background would able to be contributing in future is what i'm very clear about they can contribute in a way by making policies policy making is going to be very critical i'll take a very simple example imagine the time when there was the first car that was put onto the road and imagine how people were excited about it and then one day it would have come into the news that the car hit somebody 
and there was the first accident. That's where the traffic laws would have been changed. There would have been scenarios where new laws would have been brought into play. You need to understand the whole game. And if you are good at the game, if you understand the rules and if you can define the rules, you can tax AI. You can penalize the wrong AI implementation. And that's, that's something very critical. People really need to understand that AI will work well, if it is monitored by humans correctly, we cannot let AI go rogue. The second important aspect, apart from policy making, is for the art folks. They have to understand AI is implemented in pretty much all walks of the life. And the best part there is, it's coming in art in form of AI painting, AI doing sketches, and these are not printers. It's learning from the artwork. It's learning from the kind of strokes that somebody makes. It's, con uh, it's learning from the color conditions, the kind of palettes that you choose. Everything creative, it's trying to learn, but it cannot be creative maybe for next 15 years is what I'm pretty confident about. And to get AI to that level, a lot of contribution is going to come from subject matter experts. And as an arts person, you can do your contribution by being a subject matter expert from any such area be it linguistic area, from your language, be it paintings or art and craft work, be anything about art. There's lots to learn, lots to implement, which engineers, data scientists would not know. So don't limit yourself. The times I had require a lot of subject matter experts. Times I had requires people who understand science really, very well. The time I had really requires people who are creative. Let's come together build solutions which will change lives and make living better from healthcare perspective, from better society's perspective, in competitive landscape. So let's be the force, put India onto the global map for technologies. Let's make an India together. Welcoming you all to get started on this journey. Good luck. Want to see you on the other side. Thank you.